Hey, buddy. What's up? Do you really want to? Do you really want to taste it? <laughs> it's Wigwam today on the Music Universe podcast. <laughs> And age gives us a nice little taste of it. <laughs> yes, he does. Stay tuned to the end and you'll hear the difference between the Norwegian accent. I, I oh, can't God. do it. And Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I told and you not to do that on here, but you did it anyway. <laughs> you told me not to do it when we were on with him. Uh, There's true. a big difference. And, <laughs> I get, you know, you hear the difference between the accent mm. and the music. I, I got to say, very rarely will a theme song an opening title credit piqued my interest. Mm -hmm. But this theme song is like a little mini 90 second music video in the middle of DC's Peacemaker airing now yeah. on HBO Max. In fact, there's a new episode tonight. So go get caught up and make sure you don't skip the intro every time because it's that addicting of a song. The song is called Do You Want to Taste It? It's by the Norwegian glam rock group Wigwam. And that was kind of the entry point for a wonderful deep dive I did this week on their music. And they're as strong and as quality a group as anybody from the 80s in that era. Yeah. And, I, and I would hold that. I would hold that candle up to all of those 80s uh, hit makers in, in the glam rock space. And so I'm it's hoping. It's a great space. It's, yes. It's, that, that music is great. And it, it got shit on when grunge came in to town and i you know i like a little bit of everything but that's my favorite and if i were to be in a, another band at some point it's gonna be that type of style because it's just it's just awesome it's just fun to do that you know yeah it's just it's just plain good fun and mm -hmm. i'm hoping that do you want to taste it is the entry point because james woods knows what he's doing i mentioned that i spoke with we spoke with age a little bit after the interview and i said james woods knows what he's doing when he puts music into his movies. And oftentimes the people that follow him, follow his movies by then, by association, then go and really become attached to the bands that yeah. uh, make that music. So James Wood, James Woods, J James Gunn, excuse me, really knows, I get them mixed up. Their Twitter profile pictures are similar and they've both been in hot water with over their political <laughs> views, although on different sides of the spectrum. So forgive me for that. But James Gunn, knows what he's doing. His followers always go to the music and end up following the music and the artists then have a new fan base that don't let them go without playing that song that they're known for from the movie or from the show or whatever. So hopefully they'll get over here to the States and we will, of course, be in line to cover them. But this was so cool. I called you after, after watching Peacemaker. I'm like, we got to get this group on the show. And we got the lead singer, Age, songwriter. He wrote the song, Do You Want to Taste It? It was just a fun time. What, what did you think having our first Norwegian guest? Oh, he was great, super friendly. And you could see in the interview, we just cut up to the whole thing. It's just, yeah, it's awesome. And, you know, what's really cool is um, that the song wasn't written specifically for the show. And he'll tell that right. story in the interview. But it's just, um, I... I thought it was strange just when it came on, all these people are dancing. Like, what the hell is this? And then once I got into it, it just I couldn't stop laughing. It's just hilarious and it's great. And I'm not a DC guy except for Batman, but um, I Batman. think I'm gonna have to watch this. Yes, on Batman. That's a meme, I think. Anyway, I don't know. Here's Age. Age, aka Glam from Wigwam. Uh, huge hot band all around the world right now because of peacemaker yeah. on hbo max age I'm how fine. are you i'm fine <laughs> haven't been better i mean i've been living in a cage for now for our cave for for two years now because of the <laughs> corona shit but you know so finally we're out there we oh, released yeah. our brand new album uh, last year uh, yes. our comeback nine years since we we the band was up and running and we re released a brand new album last year in the middle of a pandemic and you know <laughs> nowhere to play <laughs> so it's been a hell time but you know 2022 really started up started off real great for us yeah yeah well, i mean it well, doesn't get bigger than dc and and john cena i'm curious what your reaction was when you when you found out not only was it going to be used in the theme song but it kind of went viral 
Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> it hit me like a bomb on the <laughs> premiere day. You know, um, I was asked by Billboard magazine, you know, if we recognize the difference be before and after. And I'll tell you what, three days before the premiere of the series, our agency, our Norwegian agency, um, decided to drop us. Mm. Yeah, because there was so, such a lack in interest in the band. So, like, oh. we're like, what? You're dropping us? Yeah, but what about, okay, so, and then everything exploded. And, <laughs> and, and, uh, and now they're like, uh, sorry. <laughs> so, like, <"Fuck> off. <laughs> I love it. For better and worse. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait a minute, buddy. I know you want to get a question in there, but wasn't that the agency that did the deal? For the song, no, like, no, didn't no, they no, know no. it was coming? Oh, uh, they're, they're just a, they're just a regular like a booking agency. <laughs> we pretty okay. much run our management ourselves. Oh, wow. We have, okay. um, you know, always always did that, you know. So, um, but we we were contacted like half a year ago um, by this bureau that wanted to check out, you know, two two of our songs. And especially then, um, uh, P, um, um, do you want to taste it? And and we thought it was going to be used maybe for for, for uh, you know uh, an an ad or something, you know, like a marketing ad, you know, commercial. But then later we found out that uh, uh, Gun was in uh, was in the business in the in the picture and. Uh, it was talk of a series, so we didn't know what, you know, they were very, um, you know, everything was very secret. <laughs> <laughs> so later when we found out, we thought, wait, hey, that's cool. And, mm -hmm. um, but we didn't know exactly how the opening segment would turn out to be, you know? So um, on the premiere day, that was the, my first, you know, <laughs> uh, the first time I saw the whole thing and it blew me away. Wow. And uh, obviously blew the rest of the world away because then I started to get get all these funny messages. <laughs> wow, congratulations! What? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like wow, what, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, that uh, that success. It's uh, hopefully it'll continue with that because uh, we watched that opening. I haven't seen the show yet, but I watched the opening, and yeah. it's just hilarious. It just. It it's really hilarious. And it almost sounds, and I know it wasn't, but it almost sounds like the song was written for the dance. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Um, it, it, it sounds almost like the, the, the lyric was written for Peacemaker in the first place. But, you know, the, mm -hmm. the song was, when I wrote the lyrics, uh, it's actually about Wigwam and um, our, our life back in the days, you know, mm -hmm. we're pretty much like Peacemaker. I mean, in the early 2000s, you know, hard rock was passe. And here, there we were in our costumes, you know, not our costumes, <laughs> but our uniforms, you know, <laughs> and people were laughing their asses off and, you know, you can't wear that spandex <laughs> and stuff, you know, well, we're, we're in the war for rock and roll, you know, and, um, People thought that we were kind of ridiculous until they started to believe in us, and and mm -hmm. until that became such a fun gimmick that people understood, and they uh, didn't laugh at us but with us, you know. After a while, and we had a great time together because we kind of, you know, we we were kind of ironic, and we we did this in the name of entertainment, not taking ourselves too seriously you know mm -hmm. we were just having fun like rock and roll is supposed to be fun and have a great time and uh, sing about girls and cars and everything that we boys like you know yeah <laughs> and, and the same with peacemaker when he arrives you know at that at the diner wearing his costume which is obviously his <laughs> uniform <laughs> it's like we have many things in common there. <laughs> well, I, I love the peace aspect of telling your former agency to fuck off. That's just absolutely awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, well, we're talking about maybe bringing them back. We feel sorry for the guy. <laughs> there you go. That's Every, awesome. Everyone can make a fool of themselves. <laughs> I've done that many times. And that's well, the thing that I hope. And as long as he's down on his knees, kissing my hand and saying, <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's the ring. It's the ring. Yes. 
Suck my there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, and that that is what I hope for the band as a result of this is that new people are going to find your music. I, I've I've done a wigwam deep dive over the last week. I'm like, buddy, we have to have them on the show. So, yeah, so cool. And thank you for having me, by the way. Well, oh, it's, it's a pleasure. And thank you for doing this because I'm sure you're getting so much media attention. Um, yeah, are, you see- <laughs> are you seeing a, a lot of, like with the streaming and the downloads, are you seeing more people finding you, more people finding your music, et cetera, et cetera? It's like, boom, <laughs> you know. <laughs> All the paragraphs, you know, everything is just like, wow. It is, it's like people are now diving into our back catalog. So you can see it on every song. It's like mm-hmm. the curves are peaking. Mm-hmm. And our record company, you know, and, uh, you know, everyone's calling, you know, saying, wow, wow. It's, yeah, yeah, calm mm-hmm. down. You know, and it, it's, it's kind of absurd. Absurd because you know here I am sitting up far up north in Norway. You know we have a we have a snowstorm outside, and I've been locked in this man cave for like God knows how long because <laughs> you know we we're not allowed to play concerts anymore. I sit here writing music, and you know I hardly see anyone because you know w- what is there to do in Norway? Everything is pretty much you know locked down, not mm-hmm. like in the USA. But, you know, we, we're pr- pretty much uh, left to ourselves. So I'm sitting here all alone and uh, writing music, my, my own business, and then suddenly, boom, and was, wow, there's <laughs> a world out there, people. <laughs> well, I say, it's, good, it, it's good to meet people. Hello. Yeah, right. Hello. Hello. Hello, Norway. <laughs> um, you know, I, I love glam metal, like, Grew up listening to like Bon Jovi and all those yeah. acts. Are they um, are a lot of yeah? So are those bands kind of your inspiration for doing this and bringing it back into let's say thirty years from when it was popularized? You know, we we all all the band members we we grew up listening to this music and playing that music in the eighties as well. And uh, but during the nineties, you know, our kind of music became very unpopular and mm-hmm. very outdated. So in, this, in, the, in the year 2000, actually, I was called up by our guitar player, Tron Halter, and he asked me to join a jam band uh, in this uh, dark and gloomy club in Halden in Norway, and it's a very, a very dangerous neighborhood. And we were jamming there, just playing what we, we loved, you know, the kind of music that we loved. We brought in the bass player and the drummer, and we had a, had a ball. And, and at uh, one time, somebody was there who was going to throw uh, an 80s party and they listened to us and he invited us to play. And three days before this gig, I said to the guys, you know, we can't be called the Absolute Friday Band, which we obviously <laughs> was called back then. Let, let's, let's, let's do some fun stuff. Let's, let's come up with this idea for, you know, an image to, to you know, to have some fun on that, at that party. So uh, we came up with, you know, four funny characters, Glam, Teeny, Sporty, and Flash. You know, that was the, <laughs> our, <laughs> our names. And Wigwam <laughs> and, you know, the whole idea with, you know, the, the, the Glam image and stuff. And then later, it became very popular uh, in that district, you know, to have us play. And, and I started, you know, to, to, you know, I came up with the idea of this band, you know, who's originally from the USA, but from Bronx with the set, Bronx, the Polish quarter of Brooklyn. <laughs> so we were we were actually releasing albums there at the, at the late '60s, you know, in the start of the '70s. We released like four or five albums, and we were kind of drug addicts at the time, and we had a rough time. So uh, and our careers, they we really flopped. So we we moved to Norway, and we took. Norwegian names, Og or Age, uh, Bernd, Trond, mm-hmm. and Oystein. And we infiltrated the Norwegian music business and we, we did some, you know, stuff, uh, you know, uh, separately. And then in the year 2001, we actually had a comeback as a wigwam. And we took back the good old songs that we had written that was stolen from us, like Living on a Prayer, <laughs> Fuck Bon Jovi, you stole that on a party. <laughs> I was loving heaven's on fire. So we played all our 
original material sounding, you know, with the original sound. Mm -hmm. And then, then we started to make new music that we mixed with the old classics that we had made. And these new tunes nobody had heard, but they dug them. They thought, you know, they came to us after the show saying, you know, that Kiss song or whatever it was, that song that you played after Heaven's on Fire, uh, which album is that, that, that song from? Which Kiss album? Uh, and we couldn't tell because we had written it ourselves, you know? So we, that's how we got started. And then that's after awesome. a while, we decided to release an album called 667, The Neighbor of the Beast. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then we got started. And, uh, and it, uh, yeah became a lifestyle so to speak I love it that's awesome and I love that sense of humor in the music and in your characters and in your style can you talk a little bit about where that that sense of comedy and that playfulness comes from uh, we're just playful guys mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of fantasy I mean it's, it's all in the name of entertainment I mean yeah I, where it comes from is uh, probably maybe Kiss, maybe Sweet, maybe, you know, Alice Cooper, you know, bringing the show to the stage and not taking ourselves too seriously. I mean, just to have fun and sure. people will take it for what it is. I mean, we don't, we don't look at ourselves as like, like superstars or whatever. We just, we just fancy having a good time and, and showing off, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so to have a good time. Yeah. Well, you and guys who, are definitely who want a good time, especially these days. I mean, it's a perfect time for us to to uh, be exploited all over the world because if there ever was a time suited for a band like us to to uh, to celebrate freedom, to celebrate the world and love and entertainment and fun and everything that's good about life, it is now because we've been through two years of hell. Yeah. Is there any sign at this point that Norway is going to unlock you guys down? No, now we have this uh, virus uh, Omicron that it it seems like it's not that dangerous. So we we only try to make people get vaccinated to to open the society a little bit more, you know, and people can be more assured and safe and, and you know, getting out together again so so it's really about to open up now we, we feel that and uh i'm optimistic i think 2022 will be a great year for for uh, rock and roll and for meeting other people and socialize having a good time yeah well good. rock's the new slogger that's for sure rock is the, definitely the new slogger <laughs> <laughs> indeed i uh I, i'm curious how you plan to capitalize on this awesome awesome new fame rebirth are you gonna do you want to play the states uh obviously you have to add do you want to taste it to your set list and if i was looking back at some old set lists of yours it's not on oh, no. so we actually did yeah i'll tell you what last year we did three shows together you know with um you know very limited uh, attendance you know uh, in norway just to just to get moving and and we tried out this new set list and it worked like a clock works like we have do you want to taste it of course hard to be a rock and roll all the good old tunes mm -hmm. and also some of the new ones and it really worked well so um and 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 speaking of the u.s we have never played the u.s before uh back in the days we were so popular in norway and you know norway is a rich country and they mm -hmm. pay good money for live shows and um, so we had a good time here and made a fortune here in Norway. And, and we did, you know, some tours in Japan and all over Europe and, you know, stuff like that. But we never went to the States. I actually have only played one gig in the States before. And that was with my new band, Ammunition. We went to Chicago and I had a great time there. And, um, but this time I really hope to bring bring Wigwam to the U.S. I, I think the U.S. is a perfect fit for, for Banacos. And I think due to the Peacemaker theme song, I think you guys will do extremely well here and uh, really do some sellout shows. I really that would be that. awesome. If yeah. there, there's any, uh, are there any agencies out there? <laughs> Hit me up direct. Look, I used to work for some agencies. Hit me up directly. I'll help you out. Don't, don't, don't you <laughs> worry about that. And there's a bunch of festivals. There's all kinds of rock festivals yeah, and know. things totally. like that. 
Oh yeah. Have guitars who want to travel. Have guitars want to travel. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Perfect yes. motto. Perfect motto. Perfect motto. Tell us about and we're, uh, and we're cheap. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. We are. Even some, better for the people beers, here. Some, some beers in a hotel room that will do, and uh, maybe a supper room. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's a, a lot of room and a there's, a, room there's a lot of cheap a lot of cheap bastards here in the u.s i'll tell you that <laughs> <laughs> tell us about the the new album you guys released last year uh it's obviously a little bit more heavy it's uh, we, we have you know but you, you can you, you can hear it's the same band it's um mm-hmm. We have the same, you know, the, the, the chemistry of the four of us, it always brings out the best in us. So, um, and this time we really worked well together and uh, co-wrote a lot of the songs and um, very happy with, with the, the whole album. I think like an album, you know, from the start to the, to the end, it, it's like a, a fine piece of work. Yeah. With the, with the last song ending, like it does with a great outro there big bombastic thing you know and uh and the intro very uh, <laughs> uh mad max you know <laughs> the, the band getting back together again and you know <laughs> yeah. everything just came together like you know like it was meant to be i love did it. you guys uh record that like all together or did you have to track it no we never we never um record it like a live live thing you know we record the drums first we write the song uh, and the, the the songs can be written in different ways sometimes uh i prefer to write songs on piano sometimes and sometimes with only acoustic guitars and um, sometimes we work like um on, on a computer in a studio thing you know just clip and do that stuff to mm-hmm. arrange the song and then later we record it you know drums and and, and bass guitar together and then we add the guitars and, you know, I do my vocals at the end and no auto tune or anything because we're a live <laughs> band. <laughs> yeah. I love that. No, that, that shit that. live if, too. If you're, right? if you're a singer, you're, su- you're supposed to sing in tune. If you can't sing in tune, you're not a singer. <laughs> <laughs> I and love I, it. I'm, I'm going to put you yeah. on the spot because we hear your, <laughs> your accent, but then to hear you on the music, you, you don't accent at all. So, before we let you go, I, I've got a couple more questions, but you mentioned it with doing the vocals live. I wanted to ask, can we get just just like two bars, two, three bars of the chorus of Do You Want to Taste It? I want our viewers to, and listeners to hear from the accent to the vocals. Do you mind? Okay. okay. Do you really want to, do you really want to taste it? What's going up must come down. <laughs> I really want to taste it. Baby, I'm losing ground. All right. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I love it. I love Ronnie, it. I Ronnie James Deal. I like that. <laughs> A little Ronnie James Deal influence I hear too. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, Age, this was this was a pleasure, buddy. You got anything else? Uh, I mean, I, I think we've hit on everything. It's been a pleasure. I just and... want to say to you guys, thank you for having me and for everyone, you know, checking out this interview. Please yes. visit our our um, our website, wigwamofficial.com or no, it's wigwamofficial.no, I think something like that. And or um, or our Facebook site and mm-hmm. um, and check out because we are probably coming over to the U.S. before you know it. Yeah, I can't wait. You know, I will be there. This was awesome. Thank you so much, H. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, that was such a blast. He's our first guest of 2022. And uh, yes, and our first video interview for Mm -hmm. 2022. So um, it was it was a lot of fun. It was so cool. Hopefully we'll stay in touch. Hopefully we can be a part of bringing them to America by raising awareness through this article, through this podcast episode. And go watch Peacemaker. Not only is there damn good music in it, but it's a damn good show as well. Well, I will have to check that part out because I do enjoy good shows, whether I'm really into the the characters as far as like their backstories and all that. But Mm -hmm. uh, I think I asked you because I noticed that John Cena was in it because I hadn't heard it, but I hadn't heard about it. And uh, it's kind of like a uh, uh, kind of making fun of of himself i guess in in this situation as a superhero so um i I don't know maybe i'm wrong i'll just have to check it out great excellent 
excellent, excellent. Forgive me. I had another work thing pop up there for a second. But for the Music Universe podcast, I'm Matt. And I'm um, Buddy. Hit that like, subscribe, and share button. And be sure to check us out at themusicuniverse.com and at tmupod.com. Take care. <laughs>